We are playing down by the river and we're also gonna take a sample of Harvey's hair to send in to get tested for uh, toxic metals. And he's requested that we do it up on the bridge. So that is where we are headed. That's getting moldy. There you go. A hair sample is an affordable starting point for testing toxic element exposure. You can use a test like this as an initial screen, but blood and urine analysis are actually going to provide the most accurate investigation for heavy metal toxicity. We did a hair analysis for Harvey a year ago, and now we're doing a second one to see if anything has changed a year later. Sliver. Yeah. Owie. Hey, hi. What? Were you running up that big hill? How come you're so strong? Because I cut my hair. You cut your hair? We gotta sit down. Two comes. Okay, what are you looking for? Daddy. I'm waiting for dad. Yep. Hey, Dad, what are you up to? Okay. Down there. Gotta go get him. I'm going this way. Mommy. Ooh, watch so hot. Good watch so hot. Hot. See that one? Where are we gonna go? The results came back a couple weeks later and not much has changed. There's been a subtle decrease in some areas, with the most significant decrease being antimony, yet an increase in aluminum. 
Our doctor is not that worried because his lead, mercury, cadmium, and uranium levels are relatively normal compared to the average population, and Harvey's not showing symptoms of heavy metal toxicity. Now that we've done two hair samples a year apart, we'll probably have all future testing for metals be done through blood and urine analysis for the most accurate reading. 